Welcome to Episode 4 of Family Matters. In this episode, you will learn about man's most sacred responsibility. What is that responsibility? Keep watching to find out. Welcome to another episode of Family Matters. My name is Anthony and I'm glad that uh, you are able to tune in this evening to be able to uh, listen in as you are able to share in the Word of God. I'm forever grateful that uh, you and I are striving to be able to understand the Word of God and what He means for the family to be able to be established in a great way that He has already purposed for us. Family does matter because as goes the family, so goes the community. And therefore, we are actually responsible for the outcome of the family as an uh, outcome of the society as a result of how we are conducting ourselves in the family. And today, the society is not helpful at all in raising up effective families, but I would like for us to be able to understand through the church what God really means for us to have a, an effective family. So today, I would like to be able to share with you what is the most sacred responsibility that man has, which is the family. If there is any sacred responsibility God has given to man, it is the sacred of family. And we want us to be able to go through that and be able to learn something so we can have effective family. Uh, if you can turn with me to Genesis chapter number 2, in verses 15, we're going to read verses 15, 16, and 17. And this is as a result of man being created already with God. In Genesis chapter 2, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, God said, Let us make man in our image and after our own likeness, and then let them have dominion, dominion, and let them subdue and fill the earth. Man had responsibility on having control of what's taking place on earth, but it was only after him having the image and likeness of God, which means he had to be a representative of God and be able to walk in the presence of God. And so with man now being placed in the presence of God and having the likeness or the character of God, God comes to verses 15 of chapter 2 and says, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and guard and keep it. Here we are seeing that now man is given a responsibility of managing, managing what God has given to him. And that is why it is very important for a male man, because there is a female man and there is a male man, a male man to understand that they have responsibility from God and the responsibility from God is to manage what God has given to him. And therefore to husbands out there, to husbands who are watching, You've got to understand that the greatest management that you have is the management of your home. That is the greatest test of your leadership as a husband, the management of your home. You have to manage your home and manage it the God's way. You have to manage your home and manage it well. Why? Because if you cannot manage your home, you will never be an effective manager in the community. If you cannot run your home, you cannot run a business in the community. Uh, you'll see today quite a few men who are ignoring the management of their homes. They are leaving it over to their wives and then they are trying to manage a business or trying to manage some kind of organization and they've ignored their family. And you realize that those organizations are not effective and those businesses are not effective because how can you ignore your own family and then be effective in ignoring, uh, be effective in managing many other families together. Because the business or organization is a compilation of many families coming together. Therefore, you have to, number one, learn to be able to manage your own family. So, husband, I am actually challenging you. It is time for husbands to be able to be in the presence of the Lord. Lead your families by being, number one, in the presence of the Lord. Just like man was created in the image and likeness of God, portray the presence of God, portray the likeness of God out of your life. You ought to lead your family in Bible study. You ought to lead your family in prayer. You ought to lead your family in going to church. If you're not doing those things, you are actually failing your family. And if you're failing the, your family, you're failing your society. We cannot do that as men. We men have to take the initiative. We have to take the responsibility. So God placed man in the Garden of Eden 
to tend it and to guard it, to manage it and take care of it. Verse 17, uh, 16, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and blessing and calamity you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. So here God is giving man now instructions on how to manage what he has been given. How many men today are familiar with Bible verses and scriptures in the Bible? A lot of men are familiar with statistics of sports, but not really familiar with Bible scriptures. And we have to change this as men, as husbands. We ought to change this. We ought to know Bible verses that will help us build effective families so that we can have effective communities more than we know statistics about plays that are being performed in games by various uh, sports. If we don't do so, we are, we are ignoring the instructions of God. And when we ignore the instructions of God, we are ignoring our families. And we ignore our families, we are ignoring our community. And so here God give man instructions. That there are instructions you ought to follow as you are in my presence. You have my image and my character. In other words, you are having my spirit in you and you are having my character. You ought to lead. Don't let condemnation or guilt or shame come upon you. You need to man up and say, you know what? I really don't know God as I ought to know. I really don't go to church as I ought to. I don't really read this Bible as I ought to. And therefore, I'm going to take the responsibility. Let your wife see you take the responsibility. Let your children see you take the responsibility because you've been given the responsibility as the key leader of your family and when you do so then the other family are able to follow you effectively because they understand that it is not about being perfect it is about being godly and that is what we ought to understand as men god wants us to be godly men and not perfect men because through his love he can be able to build us up and edify us so in verses 18 he says now the lord god says it is not good or sufficient satisfactory that man should be alone. I will make him a helper, meet who is suitable, adaptable, and complementary for him. Here now we understand that now God is giving man a helper. You see, as husbands, if we are not taking the initiative of leadership, guess what? Our wives, or our spa, our wives will not be able to help us. And if our wives cannot help us, guess what? The family is falling apart because nobody knows what to do. Everybody is living on their own. No, there ought to be a structure in the family and that structure needs to be established by the husband setting the standards of being the leader in the home. That is the place that your key leadership will be tested, managing your home as a husband. How do you manage your home? Your wife is there to help you. How can your wife help you if you're not leading effectively in managing your home? And therefore, as husbands, we need to rise up. We need to face it and say, you know what? I'm going to take the responsibility and be able to do this. Now, let me tell you some of the challenges come as a result of not taking this responsibility. And this is actually explained in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to zero in actually in verses 33, which says this. However, let each man of you, without exception, love his wife as being, in a sense, his very own self. And let the wife see that she respects and reverence her husband. That she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, venerates him, esteems him and that she defers to him, praises him, and loves and admires him exceedingly. Here you find that now the helper that has been given to you, that is your wife as a man, you've got to understand that in order for your wife to help you, she's going to respect you. But you have been commanded to be able to love your wife as you love yourself. In other words, if I love myself enough and I don't know the word of God, I will love myself to say, I don't know the word of God, and I need to train myself in the word of God. If I know I need to go to church and I don't go to church enough, I need to man up and say, you know what, I need to go to church enough. Why? I love myself to that extent that I'm not going to allow guilt and shame keep me from the best that I ought to be. And when you do so, your wife will help you. So many homes today, actually the wives are leading when it comes to spirituality. And wives are also leading when it comes to finances. There is nothing wrong with your wife being strong in those areas, but you as a man, you need to take the responsibility and champion it 
and champion it before your wife and before your children. Now, this is where the problem comes. You don't love yourself good enough then you'll always assume that your wife does not respect you enough. Because when your wife responds to you, she's not responding to you out of disrespect. She's actually responding to you out of frustration. She's frustrated because she's not seeing the leadership that you're portraying forth as a husband. And because you have to love her, you have to love her unconditionally. You are not supposed to ask your, love, your wife to reward you by what you have done. That is a command that has been given to you to love your wife unconditionally because she does not deserve it. But that helps you understand that that is your role as a leader to manage to love her regardless of what she does or what she says. And when your wife understands that you love her unconditionally by loving yourself, taking the initiative as a leader, she will respect you. She may do things that to you may not seem or look like are respectful, but actually out of her heart, she's not really disrespecting you. She's actually just frustrated and she's trying her best to encourage you. But because you are frustrated, she's frustrated. She's helping you with frustration. But if you're going to be encouraged, she's going to help you with encouragement. And therefore, you've got to understand that you as a husband, you have to emulate this. You have to champion this. You have to set this before your wife and before your children. And therefore, when you do this, this will begin to turn around. And now I'd like to encourage the wives. When your husband is trying, encourage him. When your husband is trying, honor him, praise him. Don't compare him to another man. Don't try to point to him that if you did this, this would have been this. No, no, no. He needs your help. He needs your encouragement. And you've got to understand this, especially in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 3. Peter was encouraging and saying this in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says this, In like manner, you married women, be submissive to your own husband, subordinate yourself as being secondary to, and dependent on them, and adapt yourself to them. So that even if any do not obey the word of God, they may be won over by discussion, but by the godly lives of their wives. In other words, when they observe the pure and modest way in which you conduct your lives together with your reverence for your husband, you are to feel for him that all that reverence includes to respect, to defer, to re revere him, to honor him, to esteem him, to appreciate him, to prize him, and in the human sense, to adore him, that is to admire, praise, be devoted to, deeply love and enjoy your husband. So here, wives, you are being told that let your way of lifestyle, let your way of living, let your mannerism be a mannerism that will win your husband's heart towards you. In other words, respect him with the way you are conducting yourself. I know you could be frustrated with your husband, but if your husband is trying, encourage him. Let your way of living, let your behavior be a behavior that will send forth respect to him. Encourage him in whatever you do. Always acknowledge what he does. Let your husband understand that, you know what, honey? I really appreciate that you get up every day and go to work. I really respect you for that. I respect you that you can go to work. You work hard and you come back home tired because you put your best out there for the family. I really appreciate that. When your husband helps out at home, say, you know what? I really appreciate you giving yourself to us. You go to work and you're helping us at home. You know, you are respecting. You are showing through your conduct that you really honor and respect your husband for whatever he does. And you know what? That is ministering to your husband and your husband is able to take the leadership of the home and managing, managing it very well. So you realize that if the husband don't take this role, then the wives are going to be frustrated in bringing in the respect and therefore what the husband will be hearing, the husband will be hearing the nagging and the frustration and the husband will not be able to love the wives unconditionally and therefore the wives will also see that they are not actually being loved as they ought to be loved by their husband and that is where the issue comes into place now the wives begin to work on their own and say I can bring in the finances I can run this home I can take the kids to school I really don't need my husband's help because I got this and you see when we do so the family is already disintegrating we are raising up now children who are going into the community who are not seeing the sense of having a family and that is causing confusion and so today in this episode I would like to encourage the men our most sacred responsibility we have is the responsibility of creating a family that is taking its responsibility in the fear of the Lord. Family 
does really matter. And therefore, husbands, I'd like to encourage you, spend time in the presence of the Lord. Begin to be familiar with your Bible because that is the instruction that God has given to you as a husband on how to raise up a godly family. God does not expect you to be perfect, but God expects you to be godly. And as you said, these godly examples, your wife should be able to come in behind you and help you because she is your helper. And as she's helping you, she's helping you as you take the instructions of God to be able to lay, lead a family and manage it well as God will be able to manage it. And while you do so, then you realize that now you're able to love your wife unconditionally and your wife is well able to respect you unconditionally. Why? Because the proper foundation is being established for family. Family does matter. And as long as we do this, we will find our communities being set into place because men are taking their position of responsibility. Now, until next episode, I'll be able to explain to you how to go about issues in the marriage as long as you're doing what ought to be done because issues are always going to happen. There is never a good family, but there's always a family that is being built up to be good. And therefore, a good family will never just appear up, it will have to be built. And therefore, up to then, until the next episode, I'm forever grateful for you and me being able to hear the word of God and being able to set it into place. And man, I'm looking forward for you taking that responsibility and championing your family. Thanks for watching this episode of Family Matters. If you learned anything or were blessed by it, please leave a comment. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes. 